Hey guys, what's up? What's happening? Uh, Martin Bustos here from the Lavender Project. And I'm Tony Sager of the Favender Project. Ooh. <laughs> um, this is the Creepy Boston Nurse Joy, and we have been getting a lot of, uh, you know, requests for it, so we're like, why not? Why the fact not? So I guess I have to start reading. Yep. Ever wonder how there are so many Nurse Joys in the Pokemon games? We've all been told that it's because they have a lot of sisters, but really, is it possible to have that many genetically identical siblings? Well, you never know, but still, they didn't want to let anyone know the real reason. It's far too unreal and out of character if anyone knew her secret, but I found out, I saw, and I could tell you. It all starts when you walk in the Pokemon Center. When you walk up to her and see her bright pink hair, you greet her and she has this pretty voice that wasn't actually pretty to start with you may or may not have to talk she takes your pokemon turns around heals them and then gives them back that's the usual routine most likely she'll be all nice and caring through the whole process give or take the personality she has because supposedly each one is unique in personality what you don't know is that she installed a tracking device in your Pokeballs, all six of them in case one falls out. Why? Well, when you entered the building, she knew you'd be perfect. She knew you had the characteristics for the job. Plus, you were still a new trainer. The less known, the better. Anyway, she keeps you tracked and alerts the other nurse joys you might encounter. That way, when you get to one of them, well, let's just say so they can care for you. However, if one of the nurse joys sees a trainer they, they want and stays in the center to sleep overnight, the real fun begins. You are assigned to a room, most likely a room near the back of the Pokemon Center. Can I take your Pokemon to another room so they can be healed and rested? She might ask. Say no. Just say no. It's their way to isolate you. All of your belongings can go to this drawer so you can lock it away and keep your items safe while you sleep, she says in her voice you know but still not love. The joys do this to keep you unarmed. Of course you trust these kind nurses, so all the items you had go in the drawer and she gives you the lock. Good night. Please enjoy your rest. She tries to comfort you but look closely. You may notice the fake face she has because almost always they are full of excitement before the procedure happens. Can you guess the real reason now? If yes, then well done. If not, keep listening. At about midnight, usually when it's all dark and no living thing is up and about, except for our lovely sadistic nurse, it all begins. The, nor the door to your room gently opens. There's no squeak or creaking noise because she was smart enough to oil the door so no sound is made when it opens. She comes in with a gurney, you know, those medical stretch things they use to carry injured people. Her face is not sweet anymore, but more devilish. She enjoys the ritual. She loves it. The rush. The adrenaline she gets. The red glow in her eyes. It's as if she's possessed by the devil himself. Although you sound asleep, she doesn't take any chances, so she takes out her needle. No, it's not poison, silly. It's a liquid from sleep powder. In a very high dose, an ounce could keep you asleep for, for say, two hours. The needle has ten ounces. She needs all the time she can get for the procedure to be successful. So you're knocked out on a gurney, being pushed down the hall into a room that's been disguised from as the nurse's only room. If you ever somehow manage to see what's inside, here's what you would see. Severed limbs and appendages of different sizes and jars. Only ones that didn't transform properly. There are also testicles. Yeah, she cuts them off. She drags them, the male's body, underneath a saw tool that slices them off. She doesn't mind the bleeding. Actually, she collects it through a drain and, and jars it. You know for when she needs a drink, after all, all the joys need a constant supply of blood. Now the next part is her favorite. Joy takes a knife and slices it down from the base of your neck to your groin. She does 
this very gently because she enjoys it and if you were to wake up then you can suffer slowly at this point joy's hair is not neat it's covered with blood her face is completely changed her pupils completely. completely blood red and her teeth have suddenly grown a bit causing them to look like fangs no no she's not a vampire well she could be but that's not the point Joy then has a smile that's a mix of a clown and a demon because she takes out a bottle of serum with special DNA molecules in it. Joy DNA molecules, to be exact. But before she does anything with it, uh, Joy takes out all your organs, except for a couple like your heart and your brain. She stitches uh, your uh, open incision, but it's not a decent job. After all, it won't matter. The serum needs to be directly poured uh, on the brain for it to work. So naturally, Joy will take out the saw, a regular old saw, and slice your skull just enough for the brain to be showing. The serum is poured, and after a few more minutes, your body is becoming more Joy-like. The heart and brain are revived while new organs, uh, Joy organs, grow in the empty cavity that is your body. All your cuts are healed, and it was as you had perfect skin. The process is complete. You wake up the next day wanting to work at a Pokemon Center. Anywhere would do. But you also have the DNA molecule forcing you to look out for mi minor trainers that could be the next joy. Of course, with this comes the ability to do what has been done to you. The thing is, you think you were born identical to other nurse joys. But why go through the trouble of making people turn into joys? Why not just clone? Well, I found out that the original joy was would like to someday rule the world with the army of joys that will do anything because it's in their DNA to follow the original. But cloning would attract too much attention. Plus the whole I have a lot of sisters that are identical seems to be a good story. There you have it. Now you know. Wonder how I know this? Well, who's always with Nears Joy? Who's the one in the background helping her? It's me, Chansey. Though I was told not to ever speak of this information, even though I am a Pokemon. So my advice to you is that, come to the Pokemon Center at your own risk. You never know. The thing about real Norse Joy is, she likes to hunt around by herself. So when you're all alone sleeping or just reacting, uh, don't think you will be safe. I hear she has a nice demonic face to stare at you with. Oh, looks like she just chose another victim, and I think it's you. Okay, guys, so, um, that was the reading, and, um, you know, I've never read that shit before, so I wasn't really prepared to read it, but it's a pretty cool creepypasta. And I think we both did a very, very good job for never reading this shit. Yeah, basically. Um, I can, I mean, most of the time, we say creepypastas, we show you creepypastas, and we tell you that they are true. This one, not true. Not true. This is totally not true. Yeah, this is 100%. I mean, fuck, how is the Chansey supposed to talk and shit? Correct. Correct. Chansey. <laughs> so, I, I don't fucking know. But anyways, so I hope you guys enjoyed that little creepy pasta of the I pasta. hope so. Oh, God. He turned into Nurse Joy. <laughs> shit. No. Maybe. Oh, God. Okay, so guys, um, we have a couple updates for you guys. Um, So... Director of uh, Return to Babylon, Alex Monte Calamani, will be joining us uh, as his production company will be changing names from Montebello Films to Longinus Productions, and he will be joining TLP uh, hopefully very soon so we could uh, film a documentary based off his movie called Beyond Babylon. He also might bring the um, great nephew of Rudy Valentino with him, and we hope, but, you know, uh, I don't really see that happening, hopefully, but you never know. Um, now, it was originally scheduled for this coming Monday, next week, but um, unfortunately he said that he can't come up. I'm not sure what that means, but hopefully we'll be able to do this as soon as possible. And the other news I have to give to you guys is that we now have an official TLP group, um, which uh, we have created for you guys, Not be besides the Facebook chat and um, you know the actual page. And you guys can actually add yourself into this. Now, I'm not sure how you go by like searching for the group or whatever, but if you need, you could still just add us, and we will add you into the group, and it will be all, like, good and shit like that. Um, it's pretty cool. We have um, uh, a score thing, so you could see your name and how close you are to becoming an elite TLP boss or a staff member. We also have a set of rules and a history of TLP. 
Um, we even have a couple of cool uh, photo albums, and um, everybody is allowed to post in the group. And anyone who wants to become in the chat, well, just tell us and we'll put you in. Um, yeah, I think that's all I have to say. Martin, is there anything you would need to say? Yes. Um, if you have a new Facebook, you are not allowed in the chat. Um, if you have a new YouTube channel for us to inspect, you are not allowed in the chat. Only because of past experiences that we have actually just encountered today and this whole week. Because of someone that we don't want to name. Just know, if you buy subs, if you buy views, you're not allowed. There's, you have to be legit. Legit. Yeah, guys, there is uh, some bad shit that happened in our chat. So, um, we, we can't really really trust anyone that has that says they watch our videos and they have a uh, brand new youtube or a brand new facebook i mean that's what happened to us and it just seems like just people want to fuck with us so as we're getting more popular that's going to happen more especially when we're with alex and shit so um yeah but otherwise i think most of you guys should be good and if there's anyone to join the group well come on we have like uh 30 chat members and about 50 group members in total so far so you guys can are welcome and we're funny as hell yeah no <laughs> okay so guys um thanks for watching this video i hope you guys sub and like if you do, do not sub and like well you guys can go fuck off so uh <laughs> <laughs> no i'm just kidding so um, i'm tony Sagra of the lavender project and i'm martin bustos from the lavender project and you are the newest victim for norse joy see you later stay sexy y'all peace